So in a 12 lead ECG, we are provided with 12 views of the heart. So how does this come about? Because we've got an electrode on the patient's left leg and on their right leg. On their right arm and on their left arm. And we have, as we'll see later, six chest electrodes. Six electrodes on the chest. So if we've got six pickups on the chest, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, that gives us ten leads, but it's called a 12 lead ECG. So how do we explain the fact that it's a 12 lead ECG? Well, what we can imagine is what is called Eindhoven's triangle. An Eindhoven's triangle is just that, it's a triangle. There's an imaginary line going from there to there like that. That's one side of the triangle. There's another line going from here down to the left leg, down to the foot, which is there like this. And there's another imaginary line of the triangle going up here to the left arm. And as you'll notice, the right leg is ignored altogether. And the reason for this is the electrode on the right leg is just an earth. It's not a detecting electrode. It's just an earth. So what we have here is an electrode on the right arm, an electrode on the left arm, and an electrode on the left leg, which we call the foot. Now, we're picking up electrical impulses from here, and electrical impulses from here. And these are going away into our clever ECG machine. And as you know, the first lead on the 12 lead ECG is lead one. Lead one. Now what the ECG machine does is it's very clever and it takes part of the information that it's picked up here, part of the information that it's picked up here, and it cleverly and electrically combines it into one view. So lead one is called a, a dipolar lead. There's two poles. So information's picked up from there. It's picked up from there. The machine splices this information together and gives us lead one. And what this actually means is lead one is looking at the heart from on top. So if we think that the heart is about here, somewhere around there, then lead one is essentially looking at the heart from this direction. It's looking at it from on top. That's lead one. Now lead two is another dipolar lead. And again, this clever ECG machine is taking some of the information from the right arm, some of the information from the foot. It's combining that electrical information together in a clever way. And it essentially gives us a view which is combining this and this, and essentially is giving us a view from lead two in this direction, towards the heart from that direction. So it's giving us a second view. That is lead two. And lead three is the third dipolar lead. Again, information is taken from two electrodes, from this one and this one. It's cleverly electrically combined in the machine. So lead three is essentially looking at the heart from this direction. So we have a third view of the heart. So leads one, two and three looking at the heart from different directions using bipolar electrical information. Now the next view is AVR, and AVR is looking at the heart from the right arm. So it's essentially looking at the heart in this direction. 
So again, that's another view. Now the AV stands for augmented voltage right. Because again, the machine is adding a bit of voltage to this. Now the voltage is already there, it's picked up here. But the way I think of it is because it's a long way from the heart, it needs a bit of a boost. So it's augmented voltage right, looking at the heart from this side. And this is just a one pole view. It's a unipolar electrode. And the next one after AVR is AVL. So AVL is augmented voltage left. And that's again unipolar. And it's as if it's looking at the heart through the left shoulder. It's looking at it from this direction here. So again, that's giving us another view of the heart. And then the next lead, the sixth lead is AVF. That stands for augmented voltage foot. Again, it's a unipolar electrode and that's looking at the heart from this direction. So you can see we've now got six views of the heart. We're looking at it from one, from two, from three, from AVR, from AVL and from AVF. We've now got six views to give us anatomical positional information of what's going on. And then of course we've got six chest leads. So we've got V1, V2, V4, V6, V3 and V5. So we've got V1, V2, V3, V4, V5 and V6. And these are looking at the heart from a plane going around the heart that way. So these ones are looking at the heart in this, the 1, 2, 3, AVR, AVL, AVF, looking at the heart in this direction, in this plane. The chest electrodes, V1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6, are looking at it in this plane. So we've got a lot of positional information about the heart here. So, for example, if someone has an inferior infarct, that can be seen on the inferior leads. So if the infarct's at the bottom of the heart. That's going to give ST elevation on leads 2, 3 and AVF. They're the leads that see the bottom of the heart. They're looking at it from the bottom. Or if there's an anterior infarct, that's going to be, these, these leads V1, 2, 3 are on the anterior surface of the chest. They're looking in that way. So if there's an anterior infarction, we'd expect to see that on leads 1, 2, 3, maybe 4. If there's a lateral infarct on the side of the heart, we'd expect to see that looking from the side. And the leads that look from the side are particularly V5 and V6. So we have 10 electrodes on the surface of the patient's body. We need the earth, but we can take that away. But then we have one, two and three as well, giving us a total of 12 views of the heart, giving us essential anatomical information. For example, if it's an inferior infarct, then the thrombus is most likely to be in the right coronary artery. In 80 or 90% of patients, it will be in the right coronary artery. If there's an anterior infarct over the front of the heart, that will most commonly be a thrombus in the left anterior descending artery in the LAD. If there's a lateral infarct, that will tell us that the thrombus is most likely in the circumflex branch of the left coronary artery. But all this information is only available because the 12 lead ECG gives us anatomically accurate positioning information.